The Kawasaki C-1 was developed according to the unique operational requirements of the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, or shortly JSDF. The aircraft has had a bizarre position since the beginning, even though it represents a milestone in the Japanese military aviation industry. Today, we are investigating the C-1, the first multi-engine jet aircraft indigenously developed in Japan after the Second World War. The C-1 is the phoenix of the Japanese military aviation industry. But it was not an innovative military transport aircraft, even in the 1970s. The military restrictions imposed after the Second World War and the operational requirements of the JSDF at that time had limited the C-1 since the beginning. Between 1954 and 1955, the USA donated 47 C-46 commandos to the newly established JSDF. Many sources say that Japan began to work on the C-1 to replace these aircraft in 1966. The first info is accurate, but the date is wrong. In fact, Japan had already initiated preliminary studies on a successor to the C-46 around 1956. Yet, the Japan Self-Defense Forces, or shortly JSDF, had been founded only two years ago and rearmament efforts had required lots of money. Japan was still war-weary and could not afford an indigenous aircraft development program. So, Tokyo never materialized the project. However, in 1966, the C-46 replacement became inevitable. The aircraft had been originally designed as a low-wing airliner with a tailwheel. This design made the loading, unloading and material dropping operations complicated. It had piston engines. However, it was time for more efficient turboprops and turbofans. Also, since the production line of the C-46 was closed in 1945, finding spare parts became nearly impossible in the 1960s. So, full-scale studies for the replacement of the C-46 began in 1961. To better understand the story of the C-1, we should briefly look at the operational requirements of the JSDF at that time. As the name suggests, the only mission of the JSDF was to protect Japanese soil and territorial waters. It could not send troops abroad. So, the JSDF did not require long range for the new aircraft. It would be enough to carry the relatively light cargo fast from one main island to another. The ships would handle the heavier loads. The secondary mission of the aircraft was to transport the paratroopers and their equipment as quickly as possible. So, the long range was not required, but the speed was crucial. Initially, Japan considered five options. Working on a modified variant of the YS-11 was the easiest and most cost-effective one. But this low-wing aircraft had the same problem as the C-46. Japan also evaluated working on military transport aircraft variants of the PS-1 and P-2J, which were under development. But after a brief analysis, the JSTF found these two options impractical. Japan also considered acquiring the C-130, but the aircraft did not answer the predetermined requirements. The turboprop engines of these aircraft could not answer the speed requirement of the JSDF and their long range was not needed. So, the only logical way was the last option, which was to initiate an indigenous aircraft development project. As you may see, the C-1 program was not a defiance against the supremacy of the US aviation industry, as many assumed. Since Japan could not sell military equipment due to constitutional restrictions, why would they aim to compete with the USA anyway? It was just a practical solution to Japan's needs. Japan tasked the NAMC with the design works of the C-1 in 1966. Meanwhile, the JSTF had begun to retire the C-46. So, it had to acquire 13 YS-11s as an interim solution in 1965. The company had to rush. But the NAMC quickly realized that this job was over its head and decided to work with Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Also, many leading Japanese companies joined the program. The production of the prototype began in 1968. The aircraft was fitted with two Pratt & Whitney JT-8D M9 low-bypass turbofans. Mitsubishi had already produced this engine under license. Also, since it powered the DC-9 airliner, the JT-8D M9 was highly common. It was a wise choice to reduce the cost and make finding spare parts easy. 
The prototype, called XC-1, performed its maiden flight on November 12, 1970. Following the successful trials, which lasted about one year, the JSDF took over two prototype aircraft for evaluation purposes. The C-1 became operational in 1974. Even though the C-1 was an NAMC design, the company was not in charge of manufacturing. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was responsible for the production of the tail section, as well as the middle and rear fuselage. Fuji Heavy Industries was in charge of the other wing panels. Shin Meiwa produced the rudder and cargo loading equipment, and Nippi Corporation was responsible for the flaps, slats, spoilers, ailerons, engine pylons and pods. Kawasaki Heavy Industries, which also manufactured forward fuselage and wing center section, undertook the final assembly. It was the reason to name the aircraft Kawasaki C-1. The fuselage, wings and tail unit are made of aluminum alloys. The wings have moderate sweep back with slightly increased leading edge sweep inboard of engine pylons. The cargo bay is 10.8 meters long, 3.6 meters wide and 2.55 meters high. It has a floor area of 28.6 square meters and a volume of 73.8 cubic meters. So, the C-1 can carry up to 60 fully equipped troops, 45 paratroopers or 36 stretchers. When the aircraft was taken into service, it could transport a 105mm M101 howitzer or a Type 60 self-propelled 106mm recoilless gun, which are retired today. The C-1 could also carry two J-79 turbojet engines in one flight to replace the whole power plant of an F-4EJ. It is the first military transport aircraft of the JSDF, which is suitable for 463L cargo pallets. So, the loading and unloading workload was significantly reduced compared to the previous C-46. In 1983, all aircraft were fitted with a special navigation equipment on the upper part of the fuselage to improve formation flight and material drop accuracy at night and in bad weather. To ensure the C-1's short takeoff and landing capability, the flaps are four-stage Fowler type, a split flap that slides backwards before hinging downward, thereby increasing the first cord, then the camber. The engines are fitted with thrust reversers to reduce landing distance. The C-1 can take off from a distance of 640 meters, while it requires a 455 meter long airstrip for landing. Jane's All the World's Aircraft 1975-1976 edition defines the C-1 as a medium-range military transport aircraft, but almost all the modern sources prefer the term short-range, or medium to short-range at best. The C-1 can carry 6.5 tons of load to 2,185 km distance. The range of the aircraft reduces to 1,500 km with 8-ton cargo. Naturally, it can go much lesser with its 11-ton maximum carrying capacity. During the design and development phase in the 1960s, this was not an issue for the JSDF. But when the USA gave Okinawa's control back to Japan in 1972, the problem began. The range of the C-1 was insufficient to fly from the main islands to Okinawa and the aircraft had no air refueling capability. So, Japan ordered the last 5 C-5 with an additional 4,730 liter fuel tank. This variant is also known as the C-1A but official Japanese sources do not use this definition. Even with this modification, using the C-1 to transport materials to Iwo Jima has remained problematic. The fuel reserve of the aircraft was enough for only a one-way flight. To return to the main islands, the C-1 had to be refueled in Iwo Jima, which was draining the limited stored fuel on the island. Also, the aircraft could carry a minimum amount of material to reach Okinawa. To overcome this problem, the JSDF had to acquire the C-130H in 1981. The Hercules had an extended range and could also carry more cargo. Besides, the costs of the C-1 were high. Since the C-130H were acquired, Japan decided not to spend more money on the C-1s and reduced the number of ordered aircraft. The EC-1 is the electronic warfare training variant of the C-1. One aircraft was modified in 1985 for this mission and trials were conducted in 1986. In the same year, the EC-1 became operational. The aircraft, with its distinctive nose section, has the JALQ-5 and AN-ALQ-126 jammer equipment. 
The C1 FTB is the flight testbed variant used for testing various equipment. It was taken into service in 1983. The C1 FTB was the test platform for many turbofan engines, such as the F3 IHI-30 of the Kawasaki T4 jet trainer, the XF-710 of the P1 maritime patrol aircraft, and the FJR-710-600S of the Aska. Speaking of the Aska, this aircraft is a highly modified C1 developed by the National Aerospace Laboratory. Also known as Quiet Stall or Q Stall, this four-engined Aska was built to research stall using upper surface blowing, aircraft noise reduction, fly-by-wire systems, and composite materials construction. It performed its maiden flight on October 28, 1985. But with the development of long runways at local airports, the need for stall aircraft lost its importance and the project was cancelled. Japan also considered producing an airborne mine-laying variant of the C-1 in the early 1970s but later abandoned the program. During the same period, the JSDF also evaluated an early warning version of the aircraft. But the 1973 oil crisis hit the Japanese economy hard and Tokyo couldn't spare money for this development project. So, the JSDF acquired the E-2C Hawkeyes. The five-person crew of the C-1 consists of a pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, navigator and loadmaster. The aircraft has a length of 29 meters, a wingspan of 30.6 meters and a height of 9.99 meters. Its wing is 120.5 square meters. The empty weight of the C-1 is 23.22 tons, while its maximum takeoff weight is 38.7 tons. The power plant consists of two 64 kN Pratt & Whitney JT-8D M9 low bypass turbofans. Its top speed is 806 km per hour, while its cruise speed is 657 km per hour. The C1 has a ferry range of 2400 km without cargo. The service ceiling is 11,580 meters, in other words, 37,990 feet. In its time, the C1 can be compared with the Eritalia G222, not the C130 or C160. They had a similar performance. Performing its maiden flight in 1970, the G222 could carry a 9-ton cargo to 1,370 km. This Italian aircraft could not be successful in the international market. Only a few countries acquired a relatively small number of G222 because in the 1970s there was no significant interest in this type of light military transport aircraft in the market. So, we may say that even if the Japanese constitution did not prevent the sale of military systems, the C-1 would still not have a great chance in the international market. Besides, the C-1 was tailored specifically for the JSDF's requirements. It was not suitable to answer the needs of other air forces. Let's fantasize that Japan introduced the C-1 today. In that case, it would have a higher chance in the market and compete with the C-27J and C-295. But of course, it is only a speculative fantasy. Due to aging, the JSDF began to retire the C-1s in 2011. Now, Kawasaki C-2s are replacing them. Soon, the phoenix of the Japanese military aviation industry will fly only in our memories. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.